Uh, good morning. It's our joy to study the Word of God this morning and uh, worship Him in spirit and in truth. And uh, let us remember that today is a special Sunday because it is uh, uh, celebrated by churches all over the world as Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost, Pente means 50. It means 50 days after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are celebrated uh, Holy Week uh, at the ending of March and beginning of April. And so now we have reached uh, 50 days after that resurrection to remind us of a very important uh, uh, truth that the God is, re has, uh, is given, has given us. It is uh, the beginning of the church through that Pentecost Sunday and its significance and its relationship to what we are doing now today. As we think of this Pentecost uh, work for today, let us uh, remember uh, our, our, the word of God if you, uh, we uh, go back to Second Kings chapter two. Uh, that uh, reminds us of a very beautiful story and uh, amazing thing that happened to a prophet the prophet in, involved here in uh, this portion in Second Kings is uh, uh, the prophet, uh, the, the prophet uh, uh, Elijah. And here in Second Kings, uh, the Lord told Elijah that it was time for him to leave this earth and to go to uh, heaven but it is a different kind of uh, going to heaven because he is going to heaven without passing through death so this is uh, the story in second kings chapter 2 and so here if you 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 read here first in chapter 1 Elijah and Elisha the successor uh, went to visit the the several places where Prophet Elijah had ministered in Israel and he exhorted the people of God to be faithful and to continue the work of the Lord. And, uh, and then uh, in chapter 2, they came to the point when uh, uh, they reached the Jordan River and they had to cross the Jordan River. So they crossed, but you know how did they cross it? You know, Elijah took his mantle. He rolled it and then he struck the waters. According to the story, what happened to the waters? It divided. And so Elijah and Elisha passed through uh, the, the sea. And then uh, Elijah released, you know, the mantle and the sea returned to its place. I mean the Jordan River return to its place. And so Elisha, uh, in our text that we have read, he said, uh, uh, before I go, what do you want me to do for you? And so Elijah said, uh, and we have read it a while ago, verse 9, who asked what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And so uh, and the prophet said, okay, do you have asked that difficult thing? He said, if you see me as I am taken away from you, then God will grant your request. And so as we continue Reading in Second Kings, you remember what happened there uh, in the story. Uh, there was a great uh, mighty wind that separated be between uh, you know, Elijah and Elisha. And then uh, together with that great wind was uh, the chariot and horses of fire. How can I imagine to you chariots and horses, horses of fire except that it's a very bright, maybe a very bright appearance of 
horses that were flying down from heaven, and then the chariots that were on fire, and they were very bright, and then it swooped down and took Elijah away. And so what was left was Elisha. And then, uh, you know, he shouted something like this. He said, uh, verse 12, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So that's the end of the story because Elijah never was never found again. And uh, it was a very, very important uh, uh, thing that happened here in this uh, occasion because it, uh, you know, it portrays to us the coming of the Holy Spirit. And then it also pictures to us the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ for the church, just like uh, Elijah was taken away. But uh, before we study that carefully now, we go first to what I have written in my outline. The first uh, thought that I uh, wrote here in the outline is the assignment. And the assignment, of course, going back to Matthew chapter 28, uh, it was at the Great Commission and the Lord you know through uh, to the disciples said uh, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel you will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and add to the uttermost parts of the earth and so here in the assignment that was given was uh, the command to go this is an assignment for born again believers. If someone was not is not a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, the command is not for that person. So for all of us who profess that we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal savior, the command is for us is to go and preach the gospel to all nations. Second, he did not only say go, but then he, he said make disciples. So the going part is at least comparatively easier. But the moment you, you go and then at the same time you convince people to believe in the Lord and then uh, to follow him and become his disciples, that's a little bit different. It's harder. And so in the outline I wrote here, uh, this uh, command to make disciples of all nations is already partly fulfilled today because the gospel of the Lord has been preached from the beginning in Jerusalem and then it spread out to Samaria and Judea and then to other parts of Asia, Asia Minor. And then we know that uh, in the journeys, missionary journeys of Paul, it's spread out to Europe and from the uh, experience of the Apostle Paul, the rest of the gospel was spread out all over the world through the centuries. So, comparatively speaking now, that happened 2,018 uh, uh, years ago. 2,218 years ago. So, uh, I mean, 2018, 2018. We start with the, way back in 33 AD. So, uh, it's now done, but not completely. Partly fulfilled today in our time, the preaching of the gospel since the time in 30 AD. And uh, the challenge of uh, completing this assignment is now given to us. We are the last generation of Christians, according to how we interpret the word of God. We should be the last generation before the coming of the Lord. And that means the challenge is upon us to complete the assignment of reaching the whole world. And uh, thirdly here, I wrote the hard work that is involved as we uh, complete the assignment of reaching the whole world. So what do we do? In the Great Commission of Matthew 28, the Lord said there, you baptize all those who believe. That means 
uh, initial lessons on faith, assurance, growth, and service. So you remember the day when we were new Christians and what was uh, done to us? We were given lessons on faith. Was our faith true? Did we truly accept the Lord as our Savior? Did we leave everything behind now because uh, we have faith? And then second, assurance. Now that we are assured we have been forgiven, when we die now, are we sure we are going to heaven? So that is an eternal security that is very important for the believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Next is we have to grow. So like newborn babes, Paul said, we must grow in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Like our children when they are born as babies, we have to feed them, we have to care for them, we have to love them and raise them up and train them. So that's the process now of growing for our children. Just like the growing of uh, uh, the young believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then number four here is not only growth but service. After we have grown in the Lord, we have become mature, the logical thing to do is to serve. If we have grown up and we do not know how to work, so what kind of grown-ups are we? We are big in body but still babies in our minds and in our responsibility. The Lord wants that as we grow in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we must uh, serve Him. So here in church, we serve by seeking in the choir, listening to the message. After that, attending the Sunday school and then teaching Sunday school yourself or going to baptismal, I mean to uh, Bible clubs where we teach children and young people about the Lord or even adults. And then for the whole week, wherever we go or wherever we work, we uh, have, if we have opportunity, we teach the Word of God. So that is and, uh, the ministry now of serving. So a new believer has faith and then he is given assurance of salvation or eternal security. And then he is taught to grow in faith and in service. And then he, is, uh, he starts serving the Lord. So this is part of what the Lord commanded, make disciples. So we have become disciples ourselves because somebody took time to make us grow in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we willingly received and learned and understood the lessons that made us grow. And after that, uh, we have teaching. So in Matthew 28, says they're baptizing and teaching them. So the first uh, period, the uh, point of the process is baptize with, uh, you know, initial lessons. And now comes the period of teaching. How do we teach? How long will we teach? Actually, teaching is lifetime job for every one of us. And uh, for us students of the Word of God, we also need to accept lifetime teaching, studying the Word of God, and teachings from the Lord Himself. So I put here basic doctrines. So basic doctrines means after studying about salvation and Christian life, basic doctrines meaning uh, doctrines about God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, doctrines about man, man the sinner, man. Uh, becoming uh, saved through faith in Jesus Christ and man dedicating his life to follow the Lord. And then another teaching would be not only man, but the church. How can we become part of the church? When we believe the Lord, we are baptized. But what about doing anything after that? So after that, we grow in the church. We continue in the church. We help in the church. We serve in the church. So these are part of uh, the basic doctrines. And uh, the other details of that will be something like uh, studying about winning souls, witnessing, uh, studying about how to become mature Christian, 
how to uh, deal with temptation, how to uh, uh, find a Christian partner in life, uh, a husband or a wife who is also a believer, and then how to start a family, a Christian family, bearing children and raising our children to the Lord, and then becoming adults, adults of uh, the church, adults of society, doing, doing our responsibilities not only in the church but in our community. We participate there. And then also in our uh, areas of profession, we develop ourselves as professionals. From uh, ordinary workers, we, we increase our responsibility. Maybe sometime we become uh, uh, chairman of your department there. Later on, you become uh, the head of your department. And later on, you will become the manager of your company. So all the time, growing and growing and growing and this is what we mean by uh, teaching basic th uh, doctrines and growth and then obey all things commanded. So Matthew 28, he said, the Lord said, uh, and now obey everything whatsoever I have commanded you and I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So even as uh, believers for so many years already, we still have many new things to learn. We have many new things to learn as a husband, even if you are already a, an old husband or an old wife. Many things to learn also as uh, children in the family as you grow and mature. Uh, many things to learn uh, as we uh, serve the community and the church. Many things to learn as you serve your company and uh, in the area of your work. So everything that we face around us, in all those areas we keep on growing. Because if you do not keep on growing, what will happen? So you ask uh, people who reach 60, and then you ask, is there any challenge to you? What they will answer you, the only challenge for me now is to retire and get my pension. But is retiring and uh, getting the pension a challenge? Maybe to some extent it is a still a challenge, but after that, is it still a challenge? Many people uh, you know, stop worrying about many things and they relax, go around, play chess, play basketball. Well, people who do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they do it differently. Now, we don't do that, but some people who retire, they play mahjong from morning till evening. They have a terrible way of spending your retirement. <laughs> so you're going back to grade one, no? just playing mahjong all day, losing your money, wasting, uh, winning some, and then wasting your time until you die. But that is not what we are supposed to do after we have learned it says here, obey all things that have been commanded you. And so this is what uh, we mean by this first point, assignment. As the Spirit fills us after we have accepted Jesus Christ and when we, become, we have become members of the church, so we are given an assignment. So I hope you have changed your mind already. As I pointed out before, that many Christians do not like to be given an assignment. And uh, many people do not want to be given an assignment. They only want to get the salary, but not the assignment. But in uh, the work of the Lord and in the Christian life, the joy that uh, fills our lives comes only when we are given an assignment and do it. Now the second thing here is, Empowerment, of course, when you're given an assignment, you have to be empowered. So, uh, Acts 1.8, go ye into all the world, and uh, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Every one of us want to receive power. That's why many old people, when they retire, they want to run for counselor or barangay captain. So two weeks ago, daghan ng nidagan nga ano, barangay captain. But uh, some are already disqualified. Uh, no, it's not uh, 
about the barangay captain. I think it's about the the youth youth uh, youth organizations sa barangay barangay youth. So the older people can no longer run there because ang uh, ilang edad sobra na. But uh, during times of uh, electing new uh, uh, people in the governor in the barangay, many people want to run for barangay captain. So that's a kind of empowerment. And uh, the Christian is also given empowerment. The Lord does not want us to serve without power. Because he knows the world is more powerful than the ordinary person in the world. But the moment the Christian is empowered, is given a power that is greater than the power of the world. Have you understood that? So the power that is in you is greater that is in the world. The Lord said that. Now, as uh, mature believers and having known the Lord through the years, can you say, can I say, that you now have that power greater than yourself? And you have grown up and you are ready to uh, embark on greater and more difficult assignments from God because you have been empowered. If until now, as a Christian, you have not been empowered, then you must ask yourself, why am I not yearning to be empowered myself? Because to have success in life and to have joy in life, to have satisfaction in life, all these things are on the result of empowerment. So if you do not want to be contented, you do want to be sikat or do you want to have, want to have uh, uh, plenty of riches, you don't care about empowerment. Because all these important things in life follow only when we are willing to be empowered and fulfill the assignment of the empowerment upon us, upon ourselves. And so, so that is the empowerment of the Spirit. And second here, tell people everywhere about the Lord Jesus. Now in our community, but in areas where we cannot go, we send missionaries. We also support uh, radio and TV ministry so that people who do not go to church can listen to the Word of God via radio or uh, television. All these are part of the empowerment for the church and the people of God. And then finally, the most important thing here I would like to, to share with you is the fulfillment of this Pentecost power in our lives. Well, since uh, uh, 30 AD up to now, a lot of uh, manifestations of the power of God have appeared in the world. And the most important uh, proof of that empowerment of the Spirit of God is the spreading of the gospel in all nations. And uh, the thousands or maybe millions of churches now are, that are existing in practically the whole world, in most countries of the world, though right now that existence of the church, true church of Jesus Christ, is being mixed up by different religions of the world. Yet generally speaking, we know that the gospel has reached the whole world today. Though there are still definite areas that still need it, but generally speaking, maybe 70 percent more or less have been reached by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the greater part of the uh, population of the world population of the world maybe today is about 7 million so more than 60 or 70 uh, part 70 percent of that have already heard the gospel though they may not have accepted the Lord Jesus already as personal savior but they have heard and maybe approximately 30 percent still need to hear the gospel so it will only take a few more years to do that because of uh, television and uh, uh, cell phones and uh, other media facilities that governments and private companies and even individual christians possess today and so let her he, he be here i would like to inform you about 
the realities of completing the assignment according to Acts 1.8. So, how do we complete the assignment of reaching the world for the Lord Jesus Christ? This is uh, why we celebrate today the Pentecost Sunday because we want to be reminded about this important reality and what we can do. And so here, uh, we have received power. And these are the, what we have studied several Sundays ago. I would like to focus on it again to re-emphasize it to you. The power received is letter A is the feeling of the Spirit. So Acts 1.8, you will receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you. So for us Christians today, has the Holy Spirit come upon us? And then can, can we say that the Spirit of God has, uh, has now filled us? So when the Lord or the Spirit of God comes upon you and me, that means we are filled with the Spirit. And so there is no distinction with the feeling of the Spirit, whether you are a new or young Christian, or you are a middle-aged Christian, or maybe an old Christian, or maybe a very old Christian, the feeling of the Spirit is the same to all of us. And uh, this, this uh, uh, feeling of the Spirit is further uh, given explanation here when we go to, to the book of Ephesians. I read here. Ephesians chapter, uh, chapter, chapter four, sixteen. Here, I read. First of all, I read here in verse. Uh, uh, 11, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Now the power of the Spirit, he gives special people to make the church grow. So for myself, I am a pastor. I am a pastor teacher in these categories that the Lord is talking about. And as such, I am uh, uh, giving you and teaching you so that you will grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we uh, proceed here in the, the teachings of the word, we go to Ephesians chapter 5, starting with verse 15. Then they so uh, see them that you walk circumstantly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. And verse 17 of Ephesians 5, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So he is, Paul is writing about uh, this important fact that after we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, we are born again, the next act of uh, God upon our lives is to fill us with your, the Spirit of God. Because by filling us with the Spirit, we are empowered by God. And so, uh, God wants us to walk in the Spirit. And that is a very important thing that uh, we, we walk in the Spirit. And in connection with that uh, uh, walking in the Spirit, we go back to verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And then he's saying here, the opposite of that is this, verse 11. We have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. And, uh, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, 
for whatever makes manifest is light. And so here, uh, Paul is telling us, let us walk in the power of the Spirit now and leave all the other kinds of sin that has ruled our lives before. So just to remind us, uh, I, is this question, are you filled with the Spirit now? And are you walking in the light of uh, the Word of God? And not only that, you are walking in the light. Another point that I wrote here, we must walk in wisdom. And so we are now walking circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So the filling of the Spirit implies very, two very important things. Walk in the light and walk in wisdom. If you are filled with the Spirit, you walk in a path that is full of light. That means righteousness and holiness and purity. And on the other hand, it's not only light or righteous and uh, pure. It is also a light that is full of wisdom. Because if you are doing right, but you are not wise, then your wisdom will not bear fruit into anything good at all. That's why he said, what can help you uh, walk wisely is Ephesians 5.18. Do not drunk with wine. When you are drunk with wine, you do evil things that is being led by the wine inside you. But now... If you are filled with the Spirit, you do spiritual things that are being led by the Spirit. So he said here, walk in wisdom. Because as you do this, you will become wise in doing the will of God. So just a very simple question for our believers this morning. Are you filled with the Spirit? Can you see that you are walking in the Spirit and you are uh, walking in wisdom? Because the proof that we are filled with the Spirit is walking in the light and walking in wisdom. Is there light in my life, in your life? Is there wisdom in your thoughts, in your decision, in your words? So this is the manifestation of the filling of the Spirit. So I hope this will add to your understanding of the filling of the Spirit. Because our traditional understanding of the filling of the Spirit that people teach is this. That when you are filled with the Spirit, you, you, when you listen to the message, you fall down, malipong ka, and then ma ingana ka, no? makurog-kurog ka, and then ma blah, 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 blah ka. Mauna sa ilahuna-huna is the filling of the Spirit. But here in the writings of Paul, he said, no. The filling of the Spirit means you are walking in the Spirit and you are walking in wisdom. That is the meaning of the filling of the Spirit in your life and mind. And so, it leads now to the next thought here in, the, in my outline here. The, the power of God is not only manifested in the filling of the Spirit, but it is also manifested in spiritual gifts. Well, naturally, if you have the power of God, He gives you spiritual gifts. What are spiritual gifts? They are spiritual abilities for us to serve Him. Because uh, naturally, we lack the talent or the intelligence to, to do what he wants us to do. So he gives us spiritual gifts. So here in, starting with verse 7 in Romans chapter, eight, uh, chapter 12, I read here. I read to you. Uh, starting with 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in, prof in proportion to our faith. Now the gift of prophecy simply means the gift of preaching. So it's not only the pastor who could preach, even the deacon or the member of the church could preach. If you do have a gift of preaching or prophesying, another one here is uh, or ministry, let us use it in ministering. The gift of ministry is Simply, you know, doing things there in the church or doing service in the church. So this is the gift of ministry. Are you fond of uh, serving here? Even if you are not told, even if you are not assigned, you like to minister to people. 
And so he said, when uh, use, if you have the gift of ministry, you use it to minister to people, different members in the church. The third one is the gift of, if it's the gift of teaching, you teach. In other words, if you have the, they, you like to teach, then you teach Sunday school, you teach Bible clubs, you teach uh, uh, in the other uh, uh, fellowship meetings, you're giving teaching assignments. And uh, the teaching, the gift of teaching is very important. That's the only way we can grow faster in our faith. Verse 8, he who exhorts in uh, exhortation, that means counseling. Are you good in counseling? I mean, you look at the problem, and then you know how to solve it, and you know the positive things you can do to solve the problem. But uh, there is a warning here because this gift of uh, problem solving and helping exhortation could, uh, could become, you know, gossiping. So when you exhort someone, do not exhort him by telling him about what happened to someone else or to another Christian. That is not the gift of uh, exhortation. It is the gift of gossiping. And gossiping is not a gift at all. Diba? It is a curse, a curse of gossiping. So exhorting is giving positive advice to a Christian between you and him. You don't tell anybody else anymore. Because the moment you tell somebody else, it becomes gossip. Diba? So that is the gift of exhortation. And then, he who gives with liberality. The gift of giving is not tithing. The gift of, of giving is that every Christian should give. So, there are Christians who are very liberal in giving. Daggo kayo lang ilang mga inahatag. Bisa wala na sa kwarta. Daggo ang ilang mga hatag. And it's very easy for them to raise funds. The, someone who has uh, the gift of, uh, of you know, uh, of giving knows how to raise funds. But it is different from giving your tithes and offerings. Uh, giving of tithes and offerings is not a spiritual gift. If it is not a spiritual gift, what is it? It is a responsibility. So don't say, Pastor, wala ko gahatag sa ako tithe. Kay wala ko yung spiritual gift of giving tithe. The giving tithe is not a spiritual gift. It is a responsibility. And so please remember that. So he gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. There are gifts, gifted people for, lead, for leadership. And so, but not all people have the gift of leadership. Though usually 90% of the people all the time, they want to become leaders, di ba? So church, gusto kita pila permi, chairman kita ang assign diha. But you see, not everybody is given the gift of leadership. In fact, the gift of give leadership is given to a few people only. Because if there is one who is given a gift of the service, and then ten are given of leadership. So pulo sila ng leader, isa lang ang follower, whom will they lead? Di ba? So dapat gamay lang niya ang leader, ang leader pero daghan ang follower or a server, a helper, daghan sila. So that means, I should not be too ambitious to think, Pastor, Pastor or Lord, I want you to give me a gift of leadership because I want to lead. No. It is a gift of the Spirit. And also, remember, this gift of leadership is not only on one point, not only in leading and conducting a service, it's also leading a choir. It's also a gift of leadership. Gift of music, leadership also. So in whatever area you are, and you are a leader there, do it. And so leadership does not mean that you can dictate ba, mag command ba. It's not at all. Because there are other types of leadership that does not involve commanding. Like uh, leading in counseling, leading in music, leading in uh, in advising, leading in uh, in work leadership gapon. But there are only a few leaders that the Spirit has given in the church. 
Now, so feeling, what are the gifts of the Spirit? Feeling, spiritual gifts, and then number three, the fruit of the Spirit. So that leads us back to Galatians chapter 5. I have mentioned that many times, preached on that many times. And uh, so now, the third category of these uh, things that the Spirit gives us is in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 22 and 23. I read again so that it will remind you but here but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control against such there is no law so the the feeling of the spirit is different from the spiritual gifts and uh, it's also different from the fruit of the spirit Whatever is your spiritual gift is different from the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is simply given to each Christian in order to meet any specific need that he has. So you, do you need love? Somebody has a gift of love to comfort you. Do you need joy? Somebody will, the gift of joy, and very happy during that time, will come to you and make you laugh again. Do you need the... Uh, Peace, somebody with a very peaceful demeanor will come to you and give you peace. Or do you, do you have no long suffering? So somebody who has past suffered very long and have accepted it and happy with it will come to you and share with you how to suffer long. Maybe you complain, Pastor, no. I want to suffer for short long. A problem because, like I told you before, the word long suffering is long suffering. Is there any word nga short suffering? Wala, no? Short, long suffering, so that, but long, yun siya. And uh, we have to be learned to have patience now. Kindness or goodness. There are times when in your life, it's not only one or two ang kinanglan mo. You say, Pastor, I need eight of this, okay? So the Lord will give you eight of that. Whether it is eight or one or two or three, it's still singular, no? The gift of the Spirit. Because when God gives it to you, He gives it to you in a bunch or in a bundle so that it will meet all the, the needs of your life. So, fruit of the Spirit. So there you are now. The moment we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we are uh, uh, born again by the Spirit of God. After being born again by the Spirit, now He gives us three practical things, practical gifts. Feeling, which involves walking in the light and uh, walking in wisdom. And then He gives us spiritual gifts, that means uh, the gift of service, of leadership, of teaching, etc., etc. And then number three, He gives us the fruit of the Spirit, these are, you know, practical things we need day by day, any hour of the day, we need them in our lives. And so you put them together. Uh, Paul said here in Galatians and in Ephesians, well, after you have been, you have been filled with the Spirit, you have, been, you have your spiritual gift, and you have the fruit of the Spirit, now you live in the Spirit. Now the term live in the Spirit now is... Uh, terminology to describe all of them all of them now put together whether it is feeling spiritual gifts or fruit of the spirit they are already part of the word living in the spirit that means it is now your way of life whatever happens to your life whether you are sad or happy you have money or no money you have problems or no problems it's still the same you are living in the spirit and all the time you are filled with the spirit you have the spiritual gift and then you have fruit to the spirit so that's it the fulfillment of the pentecost power in your life today so uh, as we uh, General, uh, look at these things, put them all together. I, I wrote here in my outline, coping with all the challenges of life. It is, uh, I have already mentioned it a while ago, Second Corinthians 4, 
7 to 11. And when we read it as our text, what are the things, the challenges that we meet every day that the Lord has allowed uh, us to experience? And God has given us surpassing greatness of his power. And so, uh, uh, in all our perplexities or confusion, we are not crushed. So today, do you have confusion? The Lord is saying, if you are filled with the Spirit, you're walking in the Spirit, and you have the spiritual fruit, you are not crushed by your problem. What do you mean by the word crushed? Kanang ibutang mo sa kabutang sa sa box or sa bato and then crush it. So mo na crushed. So ang imong spirito today, ang imong una una karon, crushed gyud ang imong heart, na crushed gyud. Kinsa ang nagcrush ang heart mo? So if it is crushed, no, don't worry. The Holy Spirit will put it back again. Ang crushed mo nga heart, di ba? And then what more? Persecuted? But not forsaken. You are persecuted by many people. Don't worry. You are not forsa for, uh, forsaken by your father, your mother, your brother. So the most important people have not forsaken you. So never mind the persecution. And then struck down but not destroyed. Masiguro na ego, good ka ba? Dinatumba, good ka. You fell down. But then the Bible says, no, you're not destroyed. Intak yapun ka. Stand up. Stand up because you're still intact. And then you experience the life of Jesus and he's dying. Here, if you continue reading in 2 Corinthians 4, you are experiencing the dying and the death of Jesus Christ. Good for you. Because God wants us to die, to sin, to the world, and to all our pride. And, you know, all our uh, uh, preoccupation with our suffering. He wants us to die over all of this and when you die what will happen to you you will experience deliverance over death for Jesus sake by the power of the resurrection so okay you, you tell me pastor patay na ko sa daghan mga problema digi na ko kabangon okay the response to the word of God is praise the Lord you can be delivered you go on dying <laughs> Kaya kung hindi ka mag-surrender na patay ka na, you cannot rise again. But you see, the moment you die again, you die and die and die, what will happen to you? Then you can resurrect. You cannot resurrect anything that is not dead, di ba? Can you resurrect any person who is not dead? You can only, God can only resurrect a Christian who is dead. To all his ambition, to all his pride, to all his worries, to all his disappointments, you die to all of them, and then you look up to Jesus and let him revive you. So when you do that, this is the third point I'm talking about, fulfillment. Because unless you have realized through dying, you cannot experience through rising again. And here in the third point and the final one, I wrote here, accomplishing our assignment, that the, our assignment that the Lord has given us. How do we accomplish that assignment that the Lord has given us? Philippians chapter 4 wrote, the Apostle Paul wrote a very familiar verse which is, has been memorized already. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things. Is there anything that cannot be done? Is it? Wala. 100% or 101%. Everything can be done. Nothing that cannot be done according to Philippians 4.13. So you say, Pastor, you're telling me a lie. No. Because there's something that cannot be done. If you only know, Pastor, my problem Abalan mo gid nga there's something that cannot be done. Kay may problema ko nga mura di masolve bisan sa Ginoo. Is it possible that all your problems are the deepest and the hardest problem you have even God cannot solve? So if God cannot solve it then he is God. Kinsa na ang God karon? Tingali ikaw na. Di ba? But no, it cannot be. There is nothing in this world that cannot be solved by God. 
So all things, there is nothing. All things are possible. All things can be solved. All things cannot defeat us because we have, uh, through Christ, uh, we have uh, the accomplishment of all, all things that come upon our lives. So this is what I mean by Pentecost work for today. The past Pentecost is over. So do guide na to more than 2,000 years ago na to. But what we are concerned about is the Pentecost today, right now, before the coming of the Lord. That means the filling of the Spirit now for you and me as we complete the assignment that God has given us. So what are the things that make you cry? What are the problems that make you worry? What are the difficult things that you can say, no more solution, Pastor? So that means there is no Pentecost. <laughs> that means there is no resurrection. That means there is no victory. That means there is no Christ going up to heaven. No. There is always a victory. So Paul said here in, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and 13, you find a way of escape. Problema sa ato, we have not found the way to escape. Lengthen your mind. Think hard. Make your intelligence go back to you. <laughs> think, 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 think. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there is a way of escape. So you tell me, Pastor, sige na ko pangita sa way of escape. Wala gihapot. So maybe it's because you are the one looking for the way of escape. <laughs> Let the Lord find the way of escape for you. And then you sit there. They say it in uh, Ilongo. Sitting pretty ka na diha. Relax ka na diha. And let the Lord find the solution for you. So he will be the one to find the way of escape. This is, you know, the conclu conclusion to what we are talking about. Pentecost power for today. So do you have this kind of power in your life? So go back again, study the Holy Spirit. Let him fill you. Let him give you the gift. And let him give you the fruit. And then ask yourself again, Lord, how can I apply this to my life? How can I, all these things be mine? So that now I can say, I have the Spirit of God all the time. And nothing can defeat me now because I have victory. Shall we pray? Lord, give us the joy of the Lord and give us smile in our faces. Because with him, we have died, and with him we have risen again. And we have, with him we have all the power of the resurrection that can give us victory over any problem or any difficulty. So thank you, Lord, for this important truth. Help us to make it our own. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank the Lord for his word. Let us now hear the choir.
pray for our tithes and the offerings. Our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you the glory and the honor and the praises. We thank you, o God, for providing our needs. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Lord, as we give our tithes and our offerings to you, may your name be blessed and we will be glorified. And we pray that you will continue, o God, to guide us as we use this for the furtherance of your ministry. And now as we gather these financial resources, we offer this unto you and we ask, Lord, that you will bless our church so that uh, we can continue to do your will in uh, sharing the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to have, welcome everyone to our service this morning and uh, we're so happy you are here we are happy to see brother Redney who had just come out of the hospital and thank you Lord that uh, he's here now but uh, we also have uh, visitors uh, okay, who came to, uh, to visit us for just for this Sunday we have uh, Isaline uh, Fiodo and uh, Oni uh, Tabo, Tabo. Please, may I request you to stand, please? Welcome. Okay. Shall we all stand now, all of us? Shall we sing a welcome song? Sing. There is a Good morning, everyone. I have the three three announcements to make. One is uh, we have finished our, all our VBS classes. The last one was last week uh, in Paknaan. So uh, all in all, we reached uh, without counting the Kawit because uh, the Kawit work was uh, uh, as our partner, the Bogo peop the Bogoyang people went to Kawit, but we. We financed it and also we gave all the materials. Only the teachers were not there. So there was, we reached, I think, about 700 uh, without the COVID. And uh, second announcement is next. First Sunday of June, we'll have our, the kickoff of our Bible clubs. We are praying for more volunteers uh, to help in our Bible club so that we can reach out to the people here, the children around us. If you want to join, maski ilonggo ka, pwede ka katabang. Okay, most of our teachers are ilonggo, so they can still speak Cebuano. And then, uh, the second Sunday of June, we'll have our Sunday school promotion. We'll start again our Sunday school year. And uh, let's pray no, that uh, we'll all grow together uh, joining our Sunday school. And uh, 
additional ko na lang if you want to join uh, we encourage you to send your young people to join the youth camp and if you don't have uh, your teen to, to finance you can finance other teens no we need because we want to if you can invite some of the teens in uh, from our VBS okay. It would be good no, for our teens to, no, to join the, the teens camp. So if you can sponsor, uh, I think their, their registration is 300. You can tell us if you want to sponsor one or two so that we can uh, send some young people, some youth from our centers to the, uh, to the teens camp. So thank you. Pray for our Sunday school. Pray for our Bible clubs as we start again this June. And also the special gems will open also in June. So please pray for all these ministries that will be starting in June. We'll shorten our Sunday school a little, low, uh, a little bit uh, this, this noon because we're going to meet and decide uh, concerning the Lord's will if he wants us to call Pastor and Mrs. Antonio to be our assistant pastor. So please attend Sunday school and after that attend the meeting. Thank you. So um, for the members, uh, I'd just like to inform you that uh, next Sunday we'll be electing new set of officers. So. Um, as your guide, you can read First uh, Timothy chapter three verses, I think, eight to thirteen. Um, you can see there the the qualifications of a deacon. So that is, um, and we'll we'll pray for this, and um, uh, yeah, uh, we'll pray for this, and um, let's um, elect um, officers for our church that is. Um, According to the to the standard of, of uh, the Lord, that's all. Thank you. So, all professionals, we have a interchurch fellowship this coming Sunday, May twenty-seven, two p.m. sa Danao, Danao. So, interchurch na siya. Last three sa atua. So, dito na sa Danao. Sa mga bago. We pray for our uh, announcements. So, uh, karon unya na announcements, and we pray for that. But before that, uh, let's acknowledge first the families so that we could uh, uh, know them and so that we could pray for them better. So, families, please rise as you have as you called. Bricades, Karil, Celes, Johnson. Flores, Humawan, Lugsanay, Papilleras, Santillan, Chutor, and Lodevese. Okay, let's all pray for the announcements.
Let us all stand as we sing our response hymn. Lord bless our home. <clears throat> as for me and my house, we will serve. them and how we all need to go near the Lord and to serve Him faithfully. So by your grace, help us fulfill it through the power of the Spirit. Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Spirit rest and abide with us, now and forever. Amen.
teens, girls, please join with Kuya Nathan. Mark will please join the class, huh? Okay. Teens, girls, and teens, boys, together with Kuya Nathan, please.